Good afternoon. Uh, I really am so appreciative of Environmental Media Association for inviting me here. Uh, unlike, I would say, most environmental organizations that focus on policy and regulation, EMMA really gets the importance of the mass media and its influence both on policy, as we heard in the recent workshop just, just after lunch on Aaron Brockovich, and on personal behavior. And given what's going on in Washington, the regula regulation of environmental behavior is probably going to become less and less important, and therefore more and more important will be reaching people and learning how to change their behavior towards environmental responsibility, uh, elevation of the status of women, empowerment of girls, uh, and basically achieving sustainability through human behavior. We operate on the basis of two major bodies of work related to psychology. One is the work in the last century of Harvard psychologist Solomon Ash. Ash studied conformism and what he showed over and over again in his experiments were that people were willing to lie in order to fit in with the crowd. So he might hold two objects of different length or two lines on the blackboard of different length and he had a room full of subjects who were actually plants who would, when he asked them which line was longer, would name the shorter line and then the uninformed subject would go along with them over and over again. And the lesson out of his research is you can't change social norms without changing the perception of what is normal. Many environmentalists, many people in public health think all you should do is give people information, make them experts on climatology, make them experts on malaria, and so suddenly they're going to change their behavior. But indeed, information is notoriously ineffective at changing behavior. What's much more effective is emotional inputs, and particularly, and this relates to the second body of psychological research, particularly the role of role models. Vicarious role modeling is a way most of us learn as opposed to the school of hard knocks. And Albert Bandura, who serves on our program advisory board, Stanford psychologist, has spent his career studying how role models influence behavior and what makes a role model more or less, more or less influential with the observer. So we use his social learning theory and his social cognitive theory as a key part of the design of the programs we do. Now before I go on, we're gonna run a short video uh, that gives you just a bit of an intro about the work of Population Media Center and how we create role models who are effective in changing social norms. So if you could run the power of stories, that'd be great. What is real and what is fiction? A good story helps us forget the line that separates the two. And that's where it gets its power. It's time to harness the power of stories to entertain huge audiences and positively affect the lives of millions of people around the world. Population Media Center has used entertaining stories to help 500 million people live healthier lives in more than 50 countries. From the United States to Burundi, TV to radio, human rights to environmental issues, simple to complex media markets, Everyone is drawn to well-told stories. The opportunity initially to fund a Population Media Center radio serial drama in Burundi was pretty obvious from the beginning for us. Um, we thought in a country where 90% of the population doesn't have access to television or even print media, that radio would be a good medium to reach Burundians uh, with positive health-seeking behavior messaging. In Burundi, Audience surveys showed 81% listenership of PMC's radio serial drama, Hagashi. Twitter, 
nyene bizo duteza imbere muri kazoza rimwe na rimwe ugasanga hari nk'icyo no shobora gushika ko mu nyigisho no baha ugasanga icyo gikino kiramfashije guhanura ugwaruka nka cyabona yuko rushobora guca ruhatorira ingeso nziza but being a great storyteller doesn't guarantee change PMC uses a rigorous theory driven communications method that can be replicated in any community. Using a radio serial drama for entertainment is far more than entertainment, and I think PMC has recognized that from the beginning. Um, the work that they do is very much based on behavior change theory, it's solidly founded on evidence, so it can really make a difference. C'est à travers les faits, les gestes et les comportements des personnages dans le feuilleton que les auditeurs s'identifient, donc évoluent avec eux. But how is the audience inspired to change? The key innovation in PMC's programs are specially designed transitional characters who navigate drama-filled journeys spread across many episodes while being pulled between the influences of positive and negative role models. So we create this transitional character, and the transitional character is influenced by these other two. And you know, the positive character says you should do this, and the negative character has his, his or her own ideas. Um, and it's, but it's the transitional character that decides. And it's that person that shows the audience the consequences of that decision, whether it be positive or negative. Role modeling is a powerful tool for change, but can it work on complex personal issues? In Nigeria, one PMC drama addressed family planning and the underlying reasons it wasn't used, such as gender inequality. The program attracted 12.3 million loyal listeners and helped empower 1.1 million new users of family planning. PMC's form of entertainment is designed to tackle deeply entrenched beliefs across regions or nations at very low cost. In Nigeria, it cost a mere 89 cents per new adopter of family planning. It's empowering for people. You don't tell them do this or do that. They choose. They are just seeing the different options that are available and they choose what is better to get a better life and they can create life change for themselves. Join the growing community of world-renowned organizations that have recognized entertainment education as a powerful and efficient strategy for the betterment of people all around the world. What's the world you want to see? Population Media Center can create the story that brings it to life. Thank you. We received a letter from a woman in Oromia, Ethiopia, in response to the first of now eight long-running radio serial dramas we did there, saying, thank you for dealing with the issue of marriage by abduction. Our own daughter was abducted on her way to school at age 14 and ended up married as a result. And we've been afraid to send the 12-year-old girls to school for fear the same thing would happen to them. When your program addressed this issue through the character Wu Balam, our entire village, which was listening to the program, came together and we all agreed to enforce the law against marriage by abduction, which we hadn't realized existed. And now it's safe for the 12-year-old girls to go to school. Please keep your program on the air. Well, that's... <laughs> that, believe it or not, is the kind of change we need to make a sustainable planet. Human behavior is driving this planet in unsustainable directions in many different ways. And empowering people with knowledge of what the law and policy is in their own land and helping countries achieve social 
environmental and economic development through mass changes in social norms is critically important and generally overlooked as something that needs to happen. So we're addressing an array of environmental and gender and reproductive health issues in the programs we're doing uh, in Asia, Africa, Latin America, and the U.S. And these issues uh, are intertwined in the same way that the storylines in our telenovelas and radio novellas are intertwined, because life is not about malaria on Tuesday and family planning on Wednesday and reforestation on Thursday. All of these things affect people's lives. So, we also know that people do not go home at night to watch public service announcements and listen to health messages. <laughs> they go home at night to be entertained. And if you have the perfect message and no audience, which is the case with so many billboards and health brochures, you have accomplished nothing. You've got to attract people. And there's another benefit to entertainment. It has emotional content. When you think about traumatic events that we've witnessed in our lives, you probably, for example, remember very clearly what you were doing on September 11th, 2001. Let's pick a more recent date, December 7th, 2001. What were you doing that day? You know, most people won't remember. So indeed, we know from the world of psychology, emotional involvement enhances memory and therefore, Believe it or not, melodramas are the ideal teaching tool. And we know from our neighbors in Latin America, people are so addicted to their telenovelas, they stop everything. They name their children after key characters. We're, we're getting letters by the thousands that I name my baby daughter after this character. In fact, in, again in Ethiopia, the actress who played our positive female character, Fakurta, told me a story about going into a vegetable market in Addis Ababa, and the women recognized her voice from the radio drama, and they said, you're for Kurta. And she said, well, sort of, but not really. And they said, no, no, we know you're for Kurta. We recognize your voice from Radio Ethiopia. And one of them said, I named my baby daughter after you in hopes that she would be as wonderful as you are. Now, Role modeling is very important to all of us. We grow up with key role models as children and we're then influenced by peers and by celebrities and by fictional characters. The benefit of fictional characters uh, is several fold. One is you don't have the problem with celebrity management and whatever's in the celebrity's closet. And second, uh, you have total quality control over a long period of time as these characters can hook the audience and then go through a transition. So they become very important in the lives of, of the audience who watch them bouncing between the positive and the negative influence of positive and negative characters that populate all melodramas and creating a lot of suspense uh, and cliffhangers that keep the audience coming back to find out how the uh, cl last cliffhanger was resolved and ultimately they end up as positive role models in our programs using a method created by Miguel Sabido, a telenovela producer in Mexico and they often in the early stages of this transition get tremendous pushback from their friends. Uh, we all do if we try something non-traditional and they fall back and then suffer from the problem that started them on this journey and ultimately they become advocates among the other characters for the new behavior. And so we role model advocacy, which is critically important to open up dialogue between husbands and wives and between neighbors talking about difficult issues. You know, if I'm looking for a Ben and Jerry's ice cream cone, and by the way, their headquarters are a mile from our headquarters, uh, it takes a five second public service announcement to tell me where the closest Ben and Jerry's store is and I will change my behavior and go there. But if I'm a man in rural Ethiopia 
And I think the role of my daughters is to fetch firewood and work in the kitchen, and at 15, I'm gonna sell them into marriage. Even a two-hour public service announcement is not gonna change my view. It's gonna take a whole rethinking through a charismatic male role model of my role and masculinity and the humanity of women. And indeed, I can tell you from our first radio soap opera in Ethiopia, male attitudes towards female education increased 51 percentage points if they were listening to the program. Male positive attitudes towards the appropriateness of women running for higher office went from 33% favorable at the baseline to 66% favorable two years later by the end of the program. So these programs can attack or address, I should say, difficult intertwined issues such as family size, child marriage, daughter education, and child nutrition. When you stop and think about it, all of these issues are closely related and you can deal with these issues in a way that helps the audience understand how they're related and helps them understand why they may be in poverty and how to change their lives in order to achieve health and economic welfare. So, as John said, we've worked in over 50 countries. So far, we're on number 54, which is Nepal. We're doing two shows dealing with child marriage in Nepal, a country with the highest rates of child marriage on the planet. And the former president of the country came to launch these dramas, saying he was married at 14, so it's not just girls there. His bride was 12, they had no choice in spouse, and he said, this practice in Nepal has to stop. And now we have huge audiences hooked on these programs as we're addressing the consequences of child marriage in Nepal and moving the audience towards new norms on that issue. Social norms, as I was saying with regard to uh, Solomon Ash, the Harvard psychologist, are tricky issues. They don't just change overnight, but in our society, we've seen norms on many issues change. We know it can happen, and there's a lot of social science research explaining how it happens and what makes somebody more open to change. For example, just in the last year, we've learned from research done at Annenberg School for Communications at University of Southern California, uh, the work of Sheila Murphy, a professor there, that flattery will get you everywhere. Now, to, to put it in more scientific terms, vicarious self-affirmation, that means the character you're in love with gets elected to the student council just before somebody hits them with a non-smoking message makes you more likely to give up smoking than if that had not occurred. So there's a lot of science behind behavior change and why not take advantage of it when you're trying to help people achieve health and economic welfare? All of these programs, by the way, are based on the policies of the countries that we're working in. And those countries are trying to increase demand for family planning, for health services, for educational programs. And often people are stuck in tradition or misinformation and are afraid to try something new. I can't tell you how many times I've heard people say, I'm unemployed because God wants me unemployed. And so indeed, what's critically important to changing the planet is taking people from fatalism to self-efficacy. And self-efficacy means I have the right and the ability to do what I need to do in order to improve my life. So the other thing about entertainment mass media is this can go across a nation. In Sierra Leone, our recent 208 episode program was listened to, according to the Endline survey, by 50% of the population at least weekly. 
In Ethiopia, we have 46% listenership. In northern Nigeria, we have 72% listenership. In Burundi, we did non-scientific surveys during our first broadcast. Burundi is a place you don't walk around at night. It's a little t iffy politically, as you may have heard, So, because people are getting gunned down in the street. So we have obviously a larger captive audience there. Our ca phone calls to just get feedback on the show revealed 81% listenership, and we said to UNICEF, we know it was only 50 phone calls, but we got 81% who said they were listening, and they said, we don't believe you. The UNICEF is one of the partners in that project. So they commissioned a thousand person survey and it was 76% listening at least weekly. So if you want to bring about changes in a cost effective way, you've got to do it on scale. You can't do person by person, village by village and expect to reach everybody in society. In Rwanda, we're about to launch our third program. I want to thank Lainey Thornton for convincing me to get on the plane for the first time to go to Rwanda. Lainey's sitting here. Uh, the Thornton Foundation has been a great supporter of PMC's work. And this 312 episode radio drama dealt with reproductive health, family planning, and reforestation and habitat uh, preservation for the mountain gorillas, supported by, in part by U.S. Fish and Wildlife and the Arcus Foundation. And at clinics where women were seeking antiretrovirals to prevent mother-to-child transmission of HIV, 24% of women named our program when they were asked why they had come. Simultaneously, 11% of tree seedling buyers for reforestation named our program as the reason they were buying tree seedlings. Last week I was in Beijing at the invitation, not in Beijing, I was in Bangkok at the invitation of USAID regarding a project we want to do in Beijing, which is a soap opera on central Chinese television to make it unpopular to buy or give ivory carvings as a gift. Right now ivory is a huge status symbol in China. You give them to seal business deals. You display them to show how well off you are at your parties. And we see the possibility of using a soap opera on primetime television nationwide in China to turn that on its head. We know that China is now moving to ban the ivory trade, but just as with drugs in this country, if there's demand, people will get them. So the demand has to be reduced. In Papua New Guinea, listeners were four times as likely as non-listeners to our program to seek uh, conservation service assistance with regard to logging and considerably more likely than non-listeners to be involved in marine conservation. This program dealt with all of the Millennium Development Goals and it was hugely popular and effective in that country. Uh, with regard to girls' education um, in Mali, I'm not sure if you'll be able to read this, but in Mali and Ethiopia, we've had uh, dramatic effects on positive attitudes towards education of daughters instead of sending them into marriage. Uh, we've done four programs in Nigeria, and we have our fifth and sixth on the air currently. The first one dealt with the issue of uh, marriage, uh, uh, rather of uh, obstetric fistula, which is something that's a condition of incontinence caused when a girl at age 13, 14, or 15 is trying to give birth when she's not ready for it, and it can lead to obstructed labor that leads to incontinence. And so we did a program uh, at the request of the Rotary Clubs of Northern Nigeria who developed a whole uh, surgical center to repair some of the 800,000 women who have unrepaired fistula in Nigeria uh, who often are thrown out on the streets by their husbands and live as beggars. And there's a letter in the International Museum of Women's website from Halima Abdul Sami who wrote and said she had had a baby when she was 15, she had been put into marriage a couple years earlier. Uh, 
and she developed fistula and was leaking urine, so her, her husband threw her out. She lived in an isolation hut on her parents' land, and her husband brought her a radio set and said, there's a woman who happened to be named Conde on the radio, our character, who has the same problem you have. And she followed Conde until she found her way to the surgical center in Zaria and got repaired and lived happily ever after. And Halima came into that surgical center and said, I want what Conde had. And they repaired her and she was reunited with her husband. And uh, indeed, at that surgical center, 54% of women seeking surgery named the program uh, as the source of information that brought them in, as did one third of family planning clients, which we also modeled in the program. This is the program I mentioned earlier in uh, Sierra Leone that was listened to by half the population, but also cited by 50% of reproductive health clients as the primary factor that brought them to the clinic. And in case you haven't discovered our American show, Islos High, go to Hulu or go to isloshigh.com. There are now 48 episodes. We've done four seasons. It's been nominated for five Emmy Awards, uh, and we're going into season five. Uh, just in the first month of this show, 27,000 people linked from this show to Planned Parenthood's website. It deals with teen pregnancy and various other issues affecting Hispanics. It's filmed in East LA, and uh, it's been the number one show on Hulu Latino since it launched and has been in the top five for all of Hulu for its four seasons. And if we have time, uh, I'll show you a set of clips from Islos High that deal with the issue of domestic violence, which is one of the themes we've addressed. So if you have time, please run that clip. I don't know, Maya. One minute he's bringing me flowers and the next he's pissed for no reason. He's freaking me out. I gotta go. You were talking to Jacob, weren't you? No! I was talking to Maya, Jacob's girlfriend. Look, check for yourself. Don't check anything. I know you're screwing up. I don't even talk to him. It's only you, babe. I swear. You sure about that? Yes. Dude, what's this, Berra? What is this? Pedro, stop! What is it? Tell you're me what's on this. Me. Answer the question then. What you're is that? Scary. What do you see right there, Ceci? It's for the yearbook. Miss Alvarez looked out for the yearbook. Stop. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I won't hit you again. That's what you said the last six times. That's bullshit. I would have left him the first time. Actually, only 33% of teens who are in a violent relationship even tell anyone about the abuse. And Alma's here to tell us some more about dating violence. Does anyone have any questions? Hey, Zach, do you think you need an acting class? <laughs> <laughs> I got a question. <laughs> We're in high school, what's this gotta do with us? A lot, because one in three teens are abused by the person that they're dating. Every year, nearly 1.5 million high school students are physically abused by the person they're dating. Oh, hell no. First dick that lays a hand on me is gonna get the shit kicked out of him. <laughs> yeah, and he's gonna kick you right back. That's how violence escalates. That's what happened to me. I didn't listen to any of the warning signs. Well, so why didn't you just leave him the first time he hit you? Because I didn't think I deserved any better. There's some flyers from loveisrespect.org in the back. Make sure you grab one. Okay, baby, we're going home, okay? We're going home. Come on, let's go. Let's go, okay? Get it, let's go, baby, come on. Are you kidding me? 
Why the hell would you get back with Pedro? He's a good guy. Guys like that don't change. Believe me, I've been there, I know. She's going through a lot of shit right now at work. That's no excuse. No, it's my fault too. I should have been there for him. You should have seen him, he was real sorry for what he did. Yeah, so the next beating. Damn, Maya, why you acting all superior like you and Jacob never fight? Yeah, me and Jacob fight, but I don't end up with bruises afterward. Why can't you just be happy for me? Pedro's okay now. Ceci, I know how this is gonna end. You don't know shit. Dang, what kind of friend are you? I open myself up to you and then you judge me? I'm out of here. Hello? Hi, Miss Alvarez. Ceci. I'm not feeling very well. Well, what's wrong? I think I might have the flu. I, I can't make it in today. Oh, that's really bad timing. I'm so sorry. OK, just get better. Bye-bye. Thank you for calling the National Domestic Violence Hotline. My name is Karen. Before we begin, I want to let you know that this call is anonymous and confidential. How may I help you? <laughs> I need a place to stay. OK. Are you safe right now? I'm alone right now. He's at work. Are there any children involved? <laughs> I have a daughter. She's two. National I'm going to search for local agencies in your area. What city and state are you calling from? <laughs> from East LA, California. I'm going to connect you to a local agency. Please don't hang up. OK. <laughs> You can put your robe back on. Have you ever called the police? No. I just need a safe place for me and Isela to stay for a couple of days. We can create a safety plan. Do you have any friends or family you can stay with? No, I got no one. Then you can go to a shelter. But you have to cut off all contact with your boyfriend for at least 30 days. 30 days? Okay. Okay, I'll do it. I just want to keep my baby safe. Where is she now? She's at daycare. I suggest you pick her up, come back here immediately, and I'll work on placing you. Okay. When she gets to the daycare, the baby's been picked up by the husband, and you'll have to watch to see how this comes out. I know we're out of time. I wish I could take questions, but I'll be here for the rest of the day. Thank you all very much.